Hello, what's Husky Center? Hi, I'm looking for Tina Torres. This is her. I am calling because there's a dog that is in my neighborhood, and it's been chained for days. The second I heard dog on a chain, it just kind of makes me pause for a second. I mean, is it in someone's yard? It's in this abandoned lot. It's all fenced in, but the dog's been just sitting there chained up. I've seen, you know, maybe a few neighbors, like, throwing food. Like, I'm very concerned about the situation. OK, well, I will, um, I will drive by and, um, and uh, see what I can do. The caller said that the dog is chained up with no water or shade, and that's a deadly situation. I don't have time to free up one of my guys to go, so I'm going to head out on my own. Oh, there he is, right there. Oh, wow. Hey, buddy. It's like 200 degrees in the sun. I'm looking around, and there's no food, there's no water, there's no shade, and I've got to get him out of there now. The best weapon ever, hot dogs. Being tethered or chained up, dogs can create what's called boundary frustration. It's just the constant wanting to get loose and get free. It can create a state of desperation from that dog. When I go onto these rescue calls, I don't go in there cocky and think I can handle any situation. I'm cautious. I mean, no one wants to get bit. Hey, buddy. You, you OK? I do kind of assess the situation. Was he lunging and barking? And what exactly was he telling me? Oh, OK. Is it good? Yeah. Hey. Okay. Uh -oh, watch your fingers. Hi, buddy. You know what? He saw that I was there to help him. He was friendly. Then, you know, I felt like this will be okay. I can handle this. It would have been a different situation for me if I had tossed him those hot dogs and he had just like whoosh, nothing. Hold on. I know it's hot. I'm hot too. Hey. Once I got close enough to the dog, then I saw that I had a, another problem on my hand. Oh, my good God. The dog was padlocked to his collar and his chain. Oh, man, this is not going to work. Oh, buddy, I'm so sorry. Why do people do this, you know? Well, grab that. Hold on. Never leave home without him. I don't take bolt cutters because I'm, I'm here to steal someone's dog and cut down their fence. But pit bulls on chains is such a common thing. And there's been many times where we've gotten to a rescue call where the chain's actually embedded in the dog's neck. So the only way to get it off the dog is to actually cut it off the dog. All right, let's figure this out, OK? Let's figure this out together. I did it. Yeah. Hold on. It's one thing to pick a dog up off the street because there is the potential that it is someone's dog that got loose, and they're looking for that dog. But when the neighbors called and said this dog had been chained up in this empty field, and they hadn't seen anybody, and they were the ones feeding it and giving it water. Thank God for some nice neighbors. Hi, buddy. It's one of those times where I have to make an executive decision, take the dog and say, yeah, there's an owner. Come and get me.